I have uh, I have a bone to pick because I, I feel like on both of these Battlefront and Justice League, you and I are gonna are, are gonna be on uh, opposite ends of the uh, field here. Um, and there's obvious stuff about Battlefront that are, are uh, shortcomings, but um, I, I haven't broken up both of them uh, into pros and cons. Um, and I was making my list of cons for Battlefront, and it was it was getting extensive. Like the um, pro and con list, yeah, I want to hear that. So, so initial reaction to Battlefront. What, what, uh, like as an overall, and then we'll break it down into specifics. Multiplayer or campaign or just in general? Just the game, just the game, all together. Initial reaction is, it's it's pretty immersive. It's beautiful. It's fun. It's way better than the 2015 Battlefront. But as an actual game, it has a lot of shit wrong with it. There's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of flaws. There's a lot of things that are kind of clunky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it, that, and that's not even including the campaign stuff. Yeah, well, I I didn't mind the campaign as as much as a lot of people had made major issues with it. Uh, Battlefront Two, I completely agree um, that it's leaps and bounds ahead of the, the 2015 version for sure. I felt like they got a lot of things right with this one. Um, especially like the physical gameplay. It's so smooth. It makes sense when you shoot your laser hits wherever you were shooting. It's not like a, a funky, you know, yeah. uh, gameplay. Um, they fixed that for sure. The biggest thing that I wish, and it's, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more, but battle for the, the first remake, the 2015 version, they had like a conquest. You had to go to posts and take it over. Right. I feel um, like that, that was part of the game. I don't think so. I don't think there was conquest. I'm going to, I'm going to, ah, that Check, makes me mad. I'm not that, sure. I barely played that one. It was shitty. I barely played it. I'm 99% <laughs> sure that, uh, there was like a conquest. Like you had to take points. Uh, Jimmy in, said, in that- Jimmy said to rate it out of three. I would say if you're a star Wars fan, it's a two. If you're not a star Wars fan or like you, you've watched them, but you don't really care. It's a one. Um, I'm going to be the opposite. If you are a star Wars fan, I would say it's a one. If you are just a gamer, I would say it's a two. Uh, I feel like a lot of the shortcomings come in. If you are a super big Star Wars fan, you're upset at specific things, especially like the, <coughs> the campaign. Um, uh, nah, man, I don't. I can't agree with that, man. I feel like the most of the gripes that I have with it, besides the story of the campaign, are gameplay stuff and the way things are set up. So, yeah, I, and that's I've talked true. to a lot of people that are just. They're big Star Wars fans, but they don't really game, and they want to get this just so they can like fight on Hoth and stuff. And for that, I say absolutely get the game. It's going to be great for that. It's perfect. But when you're actually into competitive multiplayer stuff, and you're used to Battlefield and Call of Duty and things like that, it doesn't hold up in that regard, unfortunately. It really doesn't. And that's what I... So what I'm trying not to do is um, hold it to the ranks of even a call of duty uh, let alone battlefield because we i'm trying to rate it as as it sits mm-hmm. they released this game i'm not trying to compare it to even the, the old battlefront 2 um just as it sits right now they released this game let's put everything else aside how good is it um now i got my list here as it sits right now i think it's a solid one and i think once they make some big updates which they've already announced that they're going to do I think it'll easily be a two. And if they really fucking listen to the fan base and take it seriously, I think it could be an awesome game. And with as many Star Wars content things is gonna, that are going to come out, they could ride the game until like 2020 if they do it right. True. I don't know if yeah, they're going to fix it's the it same, all, the same but they thing could. At, along the lines of any war game where they, you, you know you just start adding maps because the, the, the structure of the game's there. Add the maps, add the characters, add the blasters, add the different gameplays. The core, the 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 they, but they still need some work done on the core. Yes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get into a, a small list because I, I and I do want to start with the pros because um, I think a lot of people have only heard ne- heard negatives. Quickly before the pros and the cons, just some comments here before we lose them because they'll get fucking trampled here. Uh, Ethan, the Jew, says a zero. Um, that's very pessimistic. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Um, and Jamie says it felt like it was a hard fan service. That's the initial reaction is that it's fan service. I felt like, especially I can in the understand, campaign, but yeah. I felt like in the campaign that they were, it was very fan service. 100%. Like 
because they, they didn't like explain anything. If you're not, that's, and that's kind of along the lines, if you're not a huge Star Wars fan, uh, I would definitely agree with you on the campaign side that you might be lost because I hated it, the campaign. I, I I'm just going to come out it, here but, and say uh, that I hated the campaign. And before anybody screams uh, Inferno Squad, I understand that Inferno Squad can help set up the story and enhance the story. But if you need a book to make your story good in the game, it's not a good story in the first place. Like Mass Effect, right? No. <laughs> Mass Effect <laughs> 1 was amazing. The three, wasn't there three or four books? I'm not saying um, you can't have a book. I'm saying if you need the book there to make the story have make sense, that doesn't work. It adds to it. Um, right. I just don't think there was enough to make sense, too. No, they, it, was it, was a, it was a very short. quick very quick campaign. You could tell they cut shit out. But before we you know, trigger each other, go to the pros and cons list. All right. Pros. So I had, first of all, just in a general sense, it is a fun game. I think it's, it, it's a, it can be difficult. Um, I just, there's something about the galactic assault, the regular trooper gameplay that I just don't get yet. Like, I, I feel like a lot of other games I can walk into and I, I can like figure it out. Right. Um, I'm consistently like middle or, or lower half of, of the uh, points. Um, it's because everybody bought loot crates and they got the better stuff. Well, even even so, I don't you know, like I that should be able to, I, either. I, I feel like I should be able to. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I started talking about the pros and I'm already mad about it. <laughs> of so, course, that's what happens with this game ad. You can't get away from it. It's it's hard to get away from the shortcomings and the stuff that they did uh, wrong. Yeah. Um, but overall, I would say it's a fun game, uh, especially the um, the Starfighter Assault. I love. I think that's the yeah. The, the best part of the game. I agree. Um, uh, it's very smooth. It's they they simplified the the uh, the flying mm-hmm. um, and just made it more accessible. And I do actually like the um, kind of rush style where you have to do one one objective. Once you get that, it moves into something else that makes sense. So you're, you're blowing up a shield generator now. Now there's no shields over here, so we're going to attack these points on the starship or whatever it is. For starfighter it's assault, cool. yes, yeah. So it's it's cool, like the progression of the battle, yes, uh, in, in that sense, and in in the same sense on the uh, the the trooper at the side of it, because that that's normally what you're mm, doing, kind of. Um, uh, um, for Starfighter Assault, I agree with you 100%. The only complaint I have, and it's really not that bad of a complaint, it's just they removed the mechanic where if you were getting locked on by an enemy, in the first one from 2015, there was a button where you could do some crazy barrel roll or whatever and juke and lose the target lock. This one, it feels like it's really, really hard to get away from someone who has you targeted, which I guess makes sense when you're in a Starfighter. It just makes it really difficult, like especially when you're trying to do objectives. You spawn a mile away. I don't know what the fuck a mile is in space, but whatever. You spawn super far away and you're trying to get to the objective and you keep getting killed by the time you get there because there's you have these ace pilots. Um, but that's my only complaint. I mean, it's not a big deal. I've been getting used to it. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is solid. It's the best part of the game for sure. I just, um, you just have to live a, a quarter part second at a time. Um, <clears throat> the, the gameplay itself. Um, now I, I, we just talked about the, the, the game is awesome. Uh, it's easy to fly, but the smooth gameplay. And I think that that was one of the biggest downfalls of the 2015 version, mm-hmm. um, that it was choppy. It wasn't easy. The laser shot real slow. Mm-hmm. You had to lead it so much. It was just a difficult game to play. Um, uh, this one's very smooth. I, and I don't feel like there's any physical glitches for how good the game looks. Um, that when you're running, you run. When you stop, when you throw, everything's yeah. very, very smooth during gameplay. There's a few there's a few weird aiming things when you're in third person, when you're close to obstacles, but it's really not that big of a deal. That's the, like, the only thing that I noticed about that. Um, and you can't roll in the campaign, which I don't understand why they took that out. <laughs> that's that is kind of weird because I, I played multiplayer for like 20 hours before i even started the story and then i'm getting shot by rebels i'm trying to like dodge side to side and i just i'm like <laughs> like trying to roll behind cover and my character just drops and like hunches down and gets fucking shot in the face <laughs> so i don't know why they took that out but whatever um yeah yeah so uh, excellent smooth gameplay um on both both aspects whether you're in space or a uh, troop i felt like it was a lot easier and a lot fun more fun to play uh with it being that smooth um an obvious pro uh the visuals are stunning yes um you cannot the you map, cannot talk shit about that they were uh there's a, an account on twitter 
I think it's called cinematic captures or something, but he just takes like first person view uh, shots of the games, a few photo enhancements to make them look a little bit better. But he's been posting some shots and specifically from Camino as the clones looks absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the best like environments in a game that I've ever seen. It was absolutely incredible. And tie that with, I finally got to, I'm trying to find it here so I can tell you exactly what it was. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, he's cinematic captures on, on Twitter. Um, there's a, a space battle version that's in the atmosphere of Camino. So you're above like those cloning yeah. pods and platforms. That was yeah. the coolest fucking map that I played so far. That was awesome. Yeah, that's, and uh, that's a cool one. Um, I like them all, honestly. I, I, most, most of the space battles, um, I'm tired of Feed, even though it looks great. I've, I it's was just, over it, Feed. I don't like the map either. It's just, it's boring. Um, but it and still that looks was great. the one map for the beta, so we played it a hundred times. So I just, but yeah. I just don't. I don't like the map in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the the uh, campaign um, visuals were even better. I felt like when they zoomed in on Aiden's face mm-hmm. and you could see like her pores. I was like, what is going on? This yeah. is awesome. Yeah, the faces were fantastic. They and learned you could a lot see, like, from uh, cracks in her lips and stuff. Like she needed some space chapstick. It was it was <laughs> astoundingly. It was it was just a beautiful game. Yeah, they they learned a lot from bringing Tarkin back from the dead for sure. Like yeah. whoever did the graphics, like it was it was fantastic, man. It was awesome. Yeah, agreed. Um, uh, we already uh, hit quickly. Diversion. Keegan has to peace out. Uh, our buddy Matt Keegan. He's been listening to us for a while. His novel is coming out. It's called Hindsight. So everyone check it out on Twitter on whatever on the on his website text us or message your website right now if you want people to go to it but uh check it out hindsight's coming out soon if you want to um thanks thanks matt for tuning in um moving along uh with the pros we already touched this a little bit uh, but the flow of the missions is cool i i like it even though they don't have a, a general um conquest mode which we're upset about i do enjoy the flow of missions um, I wish, I kind of wish there was like different things that could happen like during the battle. Like, yes, like you have, you have a, an open book. So yes. let's just say, um, I, and it could be, let's just, for example, feed, you have the, the droid tank, whatever MTT, you want to call yeah, it, yeah. the MTT going down the middle. Uh, and the clones are supposed to shoot certain ion cannons at it to take it down. Yes. I feel like what if, if it's under 50% and you get to like, what if it just like, I don't know, like became uh, immobile. (laughs) Like if, if the clones got it to like under 50%, it actually became immobile, but it could still shoot or something weird like that, that like it could actually change depending on how the flow of the battle is coming. Because regardless, it's just like either we get to the palace or we don't. Well, well, they always do because it's they haven't like the power level there is not balanced well. And we'll get to that because the power level, there's a lot of stuff that's very imbalanced in this game. Um, But but as far as the multi steps and the galactic assault stuff, like at first it seems kind of cool, but it's just the same thing on every map. It is. You either go get the ion disruptor and shoot that vehicle or you go grab this objective while the enemy tries to defend it. And once you get that, you go grab the next objective while the enemy tries to defend that. And it's just in three stages every time. So it's kind of like, I don't know if we've had that in, um, in the 2015 battlefront. So it's kind of cool at first, but it really gets monotonous because it's just literally the same thing. And when you can't pick what map you're going to spawn into and you go to galactic assault and you just end up in the same maps over and over again, it just feels fucking monotonous that you're doing all that stuff. Yeah, it's true. Um, I'll give I'll give that to you. Um, I, I I still think it's cool, but like you said, you play Thede once, and I've had enough of it for that entire day. Now the, uh, the upsetting the upsetting thing is you're gonna play Thede probably several more times before you even <laughs> see any other map. So yeah, um, but whatever. Uh, last pro that I had was uh, we already talked about simplified space uh, battles, mm-hmm. uh, and, and they're really fun. I can't say enough. I play the space battles a lot more often than uh i probably should one because i'm i'm better at that i like i said i don't get the troop stuff yet i'm i'm middle or bottom of the barrel uh with uh, most of that stuff and i feel like like we were talking about the imbalance stuff heavy assault 
clones walk in and just knock out 12 people and walk, walk away. I've shot them 10 times. Yeah, the heavy's throw, overpowered, man. Speak? The heavy's not. So I would say it's not overpowered. The gun isn't overpowered. It's too accurate for what it is. I'll yeah, because it's just stand way back. I'll be a yeah. sniper facing off with a heavy sentry, and it takes me out first. That's yeah. absurd. If I'm if I'm right next to you, I get that. It's a fucking uh, like a machine, like a minigun. That's fine, but it's just way too accurate for what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's 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 break down into the cons because there's there's quite a few of them. Um, Everything else. First off, just a basic multiplayer game. What do you what what do you have to have? For it to be an online multiplayer game. The ability to party up with your fucking friends and play multiplayer. Matchmaking. Yes. <laughs> like the matchmaking in this game is atrocious. It's so bad. Not only is it difficult to even join a game. Yeah. It's difficult to stay once you're joined. Yes. I get kicked. I'll join. Play with you. You're in my, whether we see each other on the battlefield or not, I'm in <laughs> your game. That's another issue we'll talk about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but once we get done with one mission and it goes on to the next one, I could I usually get kicked. We don't we never play two in a row because we got to re. Oh, it's just a trick. And that's and the, the egregious part about that is that was an issue that was happening in the beta, which is the point of the beta to notice that and fix the shit before the game comes out. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So first of all, about the matchmaking. So there's a few ways to do it. So obviously you can try to join someone while they're already in a match, and that works sometimes. And if it does work. Like Mopar said, chances are after one or two matches, you'll get booted from the lobby out to a different lobby altogether in a different game mode even, or back to the men main menu. The other way is for everybody to party up in the menu, which is a little more stable, but it still makes it very difficult to change the game mode. Or if like three of us are playing together, we party up and then somebody joins in 20 minutes later, like in order for them to really join the group, we all have to quit, go back to the menu, and then squat up again, and then find a new game mode. It's just really fucking clunky. God, man. Sorry. Uh, Say it. Yeah. It's, it's, the matchmaking is just, it's bad. Yeah. And, and along the lines of even joining a game, the fact that the main menu literally has, let's call it a total of like 10 items that you can even select. Like in the great scheme of, a main menu of a game multiplayer trooper all right that's all you can do right. multiplayer starfighter that's it I, I can't i can't pick what side i'm going to be on i can't pick what map map i want to be on i can't filter any of that yeah what did, what what is what what happened <laughs> what happened you, that's like a simple i'm making a game and even like Call of Duty way back in the day would give you uh, – would let you vote on it. You'd get your your like group together and it would be like, okay, it's between these two. And if you get a tie, it's going to be a random one or something like that. Like you could do that. Yeah. It could be something as simple as that. Letting it choose for you is just basically like, well, I really feel like playing Bespin today, but I'll probably not see it at all. Or I love the prequels and I want to play as the clones, but I'm going to get yeah. stuck into 14 Galactic Empire – modes in a row because it's going to end or and then yavin and then back and forth i think i've been the first order once i've never been the, the uh resistance and i've been i've been actually the droids uh quite a few times <laughs> but who wants to play is those fucking clankers yeah yeah i i've been the clones maybe a handful of times um yeah it's it's just bad yeah it's the matchmaking is just bad I, um, it really is all right and the frustrating thing and i just want to I know it feels like we're beating a dead horse here, but when I complained about this game back during the beta, a lot of people said, calm down, it's the beta, it's not supposed to be done, everything that you think is bad now is going to be fixed for the final game, and I calmed down a bit, but like, aside from the campaign and aside from adding new heroes or new maps, the matchmaking's the whole point of running the beta so you can fix and test these things, and it's still clunky as hell, it's exactly the same. I haven't noticed a change because you go in, you can't pick a map. After a map, you get booted to a totally different lobby and you can't mm -hmm. join up with fucking friends. So it's just really frustrating. You know how, so let me just give you a, a scenario that happened tonight. Say it. So commander, commander and like five of oh, our yeah. friends were teamed up Yeah. and you guys were playing on a map. I don't know how that happened. First of all, that you even had that happen, that you had six <laughs> people on the same map. Well, it started <laughs> off, they were all playing on a map. I joined, got into Starkiller base at like, halfway through the match. Once it was over, 
half of us got booted off of the fucking entire thing back to the menu and like butter <laughs> clone was still playing in a lobby so like we everybody had to quit to go back to the menu to join back up again and then you got online and i get online and i and i you were uh, xbox grouped up uh so i can hear you guys yelling partied up yeah and I, yeah partied up and uh you, you guys just said join us so i was like okay there's there's like two ways i can do this so in in the game in the main menu the top left corner you can go to like uh people who are online and i saw your group of like six people and they, it all said playing star killer base or whatever and it, it once you hover over one of you guys you can press y to, to join game yeah um i pressed y nothing happened yep I went to the next guy, pressed Y, nothing happened. So I restarted the game, shut it down, went back into it, pressed Y, nothing happened. <laughs> so, I was, and then one of you guys said, I'll just join through the Xbox menu. Okay, that seems perfect. to work better. Yeah. So I, I shut down the whole game, went into my Xbox menu, joined game. It's opened the game and nothing happened. <laughs> I was like, Guys, how, how difficult is this? Like, you made multi- Battlefield. What the fuck are you doing? It's it's multiplayer. The fact that I can't join you makes it solo f- asshole 5000. It's just I don't understand you making a <laughs> multiplayer game and no one can play together. Okay, and now let's get to once you actually get into a game. Let's say you okay, get partied okay. up. Okay, the, the next the next well, so I have matchmaking is uh, number 1 on my cons. Next was what? Number squads? 2, lack of teamwork needed. Yes. So, let's say you actually do get partied up. So I think uh, Friday or Saturday, we played some Starfighter Assault. So we were partied up for about three or four matches, which was good. Ethan back, what's up? So let's say you get partied up. So now when you're in a game, anyone that you're partied up with is green. So they show up green. You can see them, no matter how far they how far away they are on the map, if they're alive, you can see their green silhouette. And they're green on the scoreboard. That's it. That's what happens when you party up with friends. So when it spawns for four troopers at a time, even if you and everybody are dead even at the very beginning of the match i spawned with my we were playing tonight there were six of us in a party i spawned by myself with three other random people what's the point of being in a party exactly because because to stay in the fucking lobby but we as we just explained after the game mode is over you're gonna get booted to another lobby anyway so it doesn't make any fucking sense so like i hate to keep comparing it to battlefield i know that they aren't going to implement such a detailed like squad system and that's fine but when we were playing together, it didn't feel like we were playing together at all. No. I, I maybe, like, throughout the entire battle, I might even just see you twice. Yeah. Like, just throughout the battle, and there's no point in talking because there's nothing I can do to help you. Right. Like, can't revive I get you, that can't it's, give I guess, you ammo I guess and it's, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's, no, there's nothing you can physically do. There's nothing you can do to affect me in right. the entire game. What's the point of... If I'm an officer, I can buff your health for a little bit. That's it. Oh, oh yeah. No, 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 no. You're, you're right. You're right. That is very true. And I play as the so, officer almost all the time because I unlock the, finally unlock the three round burst. Well, it's a four round burst with the mod pistol. And if you get a lock on a good headshot, it's a single headshot dead. Mm-hmm. So I've been playing as the officer a lot. So I like that. So I can buff people and help lay down a little bit of support, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. I can't think of anything outside of that. Good call on that, that. Uh, outside of the officer one special ability, I don't think there's anything that the troopers on on one side of the battle can do to help each other. Um, the assault has a, a scan dart, which will track enemies, which Very is helpful, true. That but you help. can't do that to another... Like, I can't revive you or give you health or anything, you know? Yeah. So. Okay. So, just two. Okay. Womp womp. And I haven't played as assault, <laughs> so I don't know. You don't? Or, I, excuse me, I haven't played as a heavy, so I don't know oh, okay. what they have. Kerner plays as heavy all the time, and he just, you know how Kerner is. <laughs> I also know how the heavy class is, so. Um, yeah, lack of teamwork. It's for all the difficulty of getting in the game, getting in the game together, getting in the game together and seeing each other on the battlefield. Well, there you are. High five. Let's walk this way because we can't do anything. Yep. So, <laughs> and, and it's like, I and I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to. Do it. Like when when you get into a battle in, in like battlefield, there's limitations of a certain class that like okay, assault. You can shoot people from pretty far away, you can heal yourself, but you're gonna run out of ammo if you if you're doing really well. So right. obviously you gotta have a support class with you. Uh but 
I'm assault and I have ammo. Oh crap, there's a tank. Now what do you do? Well, you need a, an engineer with you. You need something. There's other stuff that you need to make the flow of the game work. Right. And it's and it's unique to every battle because mm-hmm. other people use a lot of vehicles. A lot of people use only troops. Mm-hmm. Um, so it depends on the battle. It depends on who you're playing, which in this game, I feel like it doesn't matter who you're playing. It doesn't matter what map you're on. Just go in and shoot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't and, the mo- and the most reason that I'm mad about that is because they promoted, they like publicized the fact that they added classes to it so much. I was like, yeah, great, you added four classes, but them playing together doesn't really mean anything. Because when there's a vehicle on the battlefield, like take the the walkers or the MTT from the Galactic Assault mode, if you're a, like, you should have a class that has a rocket launcher, so you can go and, and and take that thing down. And I know there's the rocket trooper, which is like the upgraded class. But, like, you have to go to a fucking corner of the map to pick something up to attack that thing. Like, you don't just have a class that's equipped to take out vehicles for that reason. That makes me feel just like in the, in the 2015 version, how you had to run across the, the map to get To that, get a card. Uh, yeah. To get that chip or whatever it was. It's like, why? Token. Why? Token. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck E. Cheese coin. Like, it's, it, it's just... It just you're you're ta- you're forcing something into a game that's not needed. Just yeah. spawn. Maybe you maybe even do this. Let's do kill streaks. If we all we, if we all go in and you get a certain kill streak, then you can spawn as a rocket guy, and then you can shoot at the ATTTTTTTT. That's kind of what they did with the with the battle points. So once you get to a certain point, you can spawn as a rocket trooper or uh, a tank or a walker or something like that. I know, like but that. none of that stuff matters against that big thing that's rumbling down Naboo. Yes, and that's the part that pisses me off, is like, like canonically... And what like, is that word? What did you say? Canonically. Canon. What does that mean? Like, oh, canon. okay, okay. Canonly. Canonly. When you're Canonly. a fucking army... First of all, all right, Jesus Christ, I can't believe how mad I am about this part, but I just have to get it off my fucking chest. On Naboo, on Theed, when the, the MTT is going down the thing and you have to blow it up. You are a battalion of clone troopers. Why do you have to run to a royal gazebo in the fucking corner of the map to grab an ion disruptor to shoot the droid tank? I understand it's kind of part of the gameplay, but it doesn't just make any fucking sense, man. Like, you should just have a rocket launcher. Yeah. No, and that's kind of my, my thought that like as the battle progresses, I feel like in, when you become a rocket trooper because you've been doing well, yeah, become the rocket trooper and use your rockets on the thing. Yeah. And you or you need oh oh look, I got enough points now. I be, I can become a a Naboo starfighter. I can use that against the thing. No, the starfighters in the in the gameplay don't do anything. You can shoot troops though, and the yeah. and the reason and the 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 thing that makes the objective stuff worse is that you get more points from killing troopers than you do from playing the objective, which okay, takes away okay. the incentive to play the objective. Okay. We're getting into my next point. <laughs> okay. My next bullet point was the point system. Yes. Is not only does it not make sense, it's like opposite, like you're saying. It, it, I would get more points running in just shooting people than actually playing the objective. And that's why we love Battlefield so much because it rewards those who are doing what you're supposed to do. Right. If you and I, l- l- there was one one map where, uh, it was actually on uh, Seed, yeah. where you and I were shooting the hell out of those um, ion cannons. Yeah. I hit the thing like four or five times. Yeah. And I and I felt like we, we were pushing the battle. You and I, maybe a handful of other people, but everybody else was just running around shooting each other. At the end of the thing, I was like 12th. Yeah. And I felt like I did so much to move the battle along. Yeah. It didn't make sense, and it's 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 almost even worse. I feel in the uh, Starfighter assault, it's it'll way say, worse it, than that. It, it'll say like shoot because there's points on the map. It'll say like shoot this uh, the carrier projector. or whatever, and and I'll go over and that's all I'll do. Right, I'll, the entire life I'll shoot. I'll take down half the the life of the thing, and then I'll die, and it'll be like three hundred points. But yeah. if I just fly around and kill people, yeah, I'll come out with like fifteen two thousand points. Right. Yeah, it's not weighted properly. And not to mention those points during the game, but what you get after the match in terms of credits is based on time. So if I get 10,000 points and you get 1,000, but we both played for 10 minutes, then we get the same amount of credits at the end of the match. 
which doesn't make any fucking, what's the incentive to do good? You just, I was, I had to work the other day. Like I, I have a lot of times I have to like export and upload uh, files and episodes. So while I was like working on things, I just had battlefront open and I was on a map getting shot by people just moving my controller around so it didn't kick me out of the lobby. And then at the end of the match, I just got, you know, 350 credits like everybody else. Just working away, racking up credits the whole time. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And you didn't do anything? No. I just, I set my controller upside down with the thumbstick move. So it was just like he was spinning in a circle. And Mm -hmm. then I died a few times. And at the end of the match, I got credits. Done. I was also getting spawn killed on seed. um, Mm. And that was... That's rough. I was triggered. I do not like that map. Because... And people are already figuring that stuff out because it spawns you randomly. It's already a crap system. Yeah. And I spawned into fire because there were people knowing that people were going to spawn there. <laughs> I and I was experienced... getting sniped and I literally took two steps forward and I died. I haven't experienced that as bad, thank God, so far. But I do, I will say that the spawn system is not very good. Um, I think they could have done better. I don't, I don't I feel like they could have. They, I feel like they could have made it work. I can. Feel I don't. I don't anger. have to. I tell you what, man. <laughs> What's your when, next? When con? I'm spending half the time, the, <coughs> half the physical gameplay on the map, running to get killed, I'm. I'm mad. I don't like that. Yes, and that and not like I said. I don't expect them to let me spawn on my squad like in Battlefield. That's fine. But when you're playing Galactic Assault. Once the game starts, like, for example, in Starkiller Base, we got to defend this thing. I'm spawning in the base to run outside into the fucking snowfield to attack people every time you die. And if you spend 30 seconds to a minute to run up into the objective and you get killed immediately, then it just feels like you're just running the entire fucking time, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, let's let's get back to... Uh... <sighs> Back to your list. Being 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 mad at the the point system. So one, it's unbalanced. <laughs> two, it doesn't make sense because no matter how good or bad you do, everybody gets the same. Yep. So we're already triggered about these two things. Let's pack it on. So we we all get the same points. We're all mad at it. I play as assault because I like assault. So mm-hmm. I, what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. I want to uh, advance <laughs> my assault class. <clears throat> what can't I do? Advance my assault class. I have to grab random crates who is just it's there's it's a toss-up i i could play assault 100 percent and quite possibly get zero assault things i mean there is that slight chance that that could happen now sure stuff's gonna fall in because it is completely random yeah but it's like so pretty much 90 percent of my crates are stuff that i'm not going to use is what you're telling me yep <laughs> Yep. So, so what I got pissed about last week is not a hundred percent true. So I said you can't play as assault and level up the assault class, and that's kind of true. But what happens is you don't actually level up the assault class. That level that you have, that signifies like how far along you are. That's how many cards you've unlocked. It's not actually like I guess it's level of the class, but you don't actually like gain experience and, and rank that thing up. Once you unlock ten different assault cards. You're rank 10 in assault. That's what that signifies. So it doesn't matter. Those ability cards. Well, it kind of matters because you need those new ones to actually equip them and, and, and rank up. It's just annoying how it works. And um, you can craft them when you get those crafting parts and things in the crates sometimes. Or if you get duplicates in crates, which why would you get a fucking duplicate? That's dumb as fuck. <laughs> uh, it turns into credits and you can buy other things and do motherfucking like transactions and get on the stock market and trade for crystals and then get crafting parts. Dude, and it's ridiculous. The daily, the daily uh, crates that I get, I've got nothing but 100, 100 credits and like crafting, crafting parts. Things. Yeah. I yeah. hate it. I'm never opening it again. Never playing it again. You want to play after this? Um, uh, and they did also the customization is an issue. Um, they said specifically. They did <laughs> Class Armor, making a cameo. <laughs> they did this Reddit AMA. I'm sure people heard about it because all the controversy is pretty much happening over on Reddit. Um, they said that they did not get a chance to finish the customization as far as like look and armor and faces and stuff went. So they are adding that. So you will be able to, you know, pick like phase one versus phase two clone troopers, color, different visors, stuff like that, hopefully. Uh, like if you're a rebel, you could be a Twi'lek or a Celestian character. So hopefully that gets added in. I don't know. 
Yeah. I'm just going to be mad about it. What do you All think right, about one, that controversy, by the way? Or do you have any, do you have the last thing on your list? I do. Go what, for what, it. What'd you say? Well, the con- the main controversy and why EA changed shit in the first place was because Reddit had a shitstorm over the crates, first of all, and that you could just buy, spend 50 bucks, buy a ton of crates and be like way ahead of everybody else. Kind of annoying, but if you're good at the game, then fuck that. doesn't matter anyways. Um, and the heroes were locked behind a crazy credit paywall. So if you yeah. get 300 credits a match, Darth Vader costs 50,000 credits. And you have to save up for him, can't buy any upgrades, any extra armor or guns or abilities. You have to wait to get Vader. It was going to take 20, 30 hours just to get one hero. 20, 30 years. And there's six heroes on, uh, that are locked that you have to get. So that was the big controversy. Kind of annoying, but like I said, the, the stuff about the gameplay that we've been mentioning, that for me is way more annoying than the fucking credits were. Let's just have a multiplayer game that plays like a multiplayer game. Is that... Am I, am I wrong? Am I wrong to want to play Star Wars? <laughs> I want to have fun playing Star Wars, but I can't. No, you can't do uh, it. Okay. EA will not let you have it. All right. So I have this under the cons list. Um, we can go back and forth on it. But the uh, the campaign itself. So yeah. this, this was. I hated it. So first of all, okay, well, you're already triggered. Um, <laughs> I, I felt like this was going to be the, not the saving grace, but the biggest incentive be behind 2015 to now now we have a campaign first of all we have the last jedi coming out what a perfect release you're you're a month before it could it could really really enhance the last jedi Mm -hmm. or the characters in the force awakens which in indirectly enhances the last jedi um it doesn't no it really doesn't there's one small potential spoil well small there's one large potential spoiler that could happen at the end um but outside of that the 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 game it, i felt like it was more of a long very long t- tutorial uh, for all the heroes it was a slap in the fucking face <laughs> it was a slap oh, in the fucking shoot. face they spent a goddamn year promoting the dark side promoting being a bad guy being a stormtrooper support the empire being a fucking stormtrooper and seeing what they go through and why they're so devoted to the empire spoiler a spoiler alert start now by mission fucking four, you switched to the Rebel Alliance. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I mean, are that's, you that's, serious? Built, that's, built in, that's built into the book. But again, the campaign itself was only four or five hours long. They cut out a bunch of things. And when they promoted the entire game as Inferno Squad, being a stormtrooper, being a bad guy, let's see the Empire story. Fuck the book, man. Like, this is supposed to be a story part of the game. They switched the Rebel Alliance. Like, I can't. I couldn't believe it. As soon as it popped up, I was so mad, and the rest of the campaign, I predicted everything that was going to happen. I was fucking triggered. So, I understand. Um, I, I get, it. I get why you, they did it. Like I said, I get why they did it. Like, that's kind of what Star Wars does. Like, here's some, like, Stormtroopers are cool, Vader's cool, but we're about the good guys. It's the Rebel Alliance, and I understand that. The reason I'm so mad is that they spent the entire promotion of the game talking about how we're finally going to get a bad guy story. Yeah, very true. Very true. Um, yeah, and I felt I feel like it wouldn't have been as bad if they didn't promote it as such, but <clears throat> yeah. they really did. It was a hundred percent. Hey, it's the Empire. Like we get to see their their point of view. By the way, go go gadget rebellion. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, and it was just like happy go lucky. All of a sudden, it. <sighs> yeah, and the, you know one of the most cringy parts of all of that is as soon as they switched. It was like a, uh, hey, bucko, like, it's, it's Leia. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> I'm like, shut That made it worse, man. Shut up, Aiden. Shut up. That made Just it worse. shut up. Made it so bad. <laughs> Why are you, like, kidding around with Princess Leia? You have murdered more people, in, in, uh, more rebels than probably everybody put together in the Imperials. And you were happy about it. And you were... And I Glorious. was happy about it. And now you, you fucking ha- switch sides, you goddamn traitor. You had one little fight with your dad, and then you, which one little crap, fight? Cra- your dad got scared. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah. Nope. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that, um, that was really fucking frustrating. I, and that's and I I think I even uh, texted you. I was just like, I know you're gonna be mad about this because yeah. it's just I think it's I think it's the fourth. I think it's either like, four or five out of thirteen missions. I think. 
Yeah, it's and you're flying around in X wings. Um, and the first few aren't that long either. No, it's 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 quick. It's a quick gameplay. Even if you are really slow with that stuff, it's a very quick gameplay. And it feels um, to me like they cut a lot of a lot of missions and a lot of story parts out of it. Mission. If they missions had, explored all the understand no. <laughs> Those blue random Twi'lek uh, rebels kind of looked like mission when I was playing. Um, if they had, I don't know if they cut stuff out or if they purposely made it this abrupt. If it was a longer campaign and story, I may not have been that annoyed about the switch because what I was expecting to see is like, cause they, they did that in part of the story trailers that you see the Death Star two blow up on Endor. Um, she goes back to her ship, talks to her dad. They're, uh, um, the fuck word am I trying to say? Initiating operation cinder. You have the Emperor's Messenger Droid, who pops up once and says one thing, that's it. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. I was expecting like her to be going, getting orders from the Messenger Droid, going, killing rebels, coming back, and like it's the story to develop over that. I didn't know Operation Cinder was just one awkward weather satellite plot to just blow up a few planets. Yeah. That's just like a weird version of the Death Star, where you just go in, fuck the weather up, and blow the planets up. Like it's it's even worse because you're not you're not blowing up the planets. You're just making it rain a lot, uh, which is just <laughs> dreary. No one wants to live in a rainy rainy ecosystem. Um, no, it's it's my issues with <sighs> the campaign. Iden Versio is in the book. That's the main character. She's the commander. She's the badass. Yeah. We move on. We're, we're we start out in the campaign as her. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You do like four or five missions, and it's it's fun. You start building up. Even though she went to the the, the rebellion, it's still like okay, okay. Let, let's let's still like destroy stuff and have fun. And then they throw in like every hero that doesn't make sense. That's just random. Why am I Han in Maz's palace right now? With a Why? fucking scruffy looking beard. Why? Why am I looking for some drunk for for some info? Why? I want to be Aiden. It's a shitty gameplay already. Why can't I just be Aiden and yeah. blow stuff up and get stuff done? Exactly. Why Why am I Lando jumping lava rocks? That was with so this, dumb. With this blue guy. It's like, what? And first of all, I did like that blue guy. He yeah, had an he was attitude awesome. and he was cool. Shrek but or whatever. it still was just like, there's, there's, I don't want to be Lando right now. No. Like, okay, it's, it's, it's cool. And that's why I was just like, it, it was, it's, it's a tutorial for all the heroes. Yeah. Let's play as everybody. Right. And then you get the, like, you have to use this to get through this. And ugh, I was so atrocious. fucking mad, dude. So as soon as, <laughs> as soon as the Luke mission popped up, first of all, Luke looked terrible, talked terrible. His dialogue was good, but the voice actor, I'm sorry guys, but the voice actor you picked did not sound like 83 Mark Hamill at all. So as soon as he popped up, I was kind of annoyed, like, great. I only played like three or four missions as the bad guys. Now all of a sudden I'm Luke. I thought it was going to just be one quick side mission as luke that gives you a little bit of backstory lets you play as a hero for a few like a few minutes okay i can deal with that and then you're leia and then you're han and then you're lando like it just they just wouldn't fucking shut up about it as if you can't have star wars unless luke han leia and lando and chewie are there too like I, like here's here's some prequel shit in the movie or in the, in the game but it's not really star wars unless you play as luke han and leia obviously Right. It just, it was like, I'm not, a, I'm not fucking dumb, man. Like you can make a game with a new story, characters that I care about that I can play through. You don't have to shove Luke Skywalker in my face for me to like understand that it's a Star Wars game. You know, and I haven't heard about I don't any know, of this yet. Opar, tell me. <sighs> why isn't there any, uh, well, why isn't there any Rogue One characters in multiplayer? I don't know. Like, that'd be cool if you could be K2SO lurping in and, and pulling people apart. What up, Dakota Dones? Yeah. Let's uh, let's finish, wrap up the campaign shit. We'll talk about, um, I want to talk about prequel stuff and heroes and, like, DLC. We're not going to even get to Justice League. <laughs> this is going <laughs> to be a long episode. This if, is back to our uh, original days of three and a half hour shit. I haven't been this sober in decades. Okay. Um, campaign shit. The campaign... Yeah, the Luke stuff, you know, I thought it was weird. I didn't hate it. I don't know why I didn't hate it. Maybe it was because... Maybe because you like, read the book. What, Luke's not in the book. It doesn't matter. Um, I 
just to, with your complaints about it, like I, I knew and I had those same issues, but I was okay with it because it was, it was seeing Luke in a new light. And that's why I liked it. It was seeing Luke as like a calming presence. Yeah. That there's so much tension going around and he kind of just walks in, asks the guy, do you need help? Helps him out. Yeah. And then in the end, it kind of, he used that to like, I need this compass. Why should I give it to you? Because I asked. Like, that made so much sense to me. I was like, okay, this is cool. Because you don't see, like, even the the Jedi in the Clone Wars, they're kind of uppity. And I'm better than you. And I know what's going on. But the dark side clouds all. Um, Well, because that was, that was the Luke that I kind of wanted to see in Return of the Jedi. Agreed. And and when he was talking, like, when he goes into Jabba and he's just calm and he's like, hey, you don't want to make this deal. Things are going to end bad. Here's the droids. Let's do this shit. That part is kind of close. But then as soon as his lightsaber is out, he's swinging left and right like a fucking crazy person. And it doesn't fit his his uh, like his like poise as a character. The dialogue in this one, in his little side mission, I thought was perfect Luke. It was great. I loved seeing that. And it helps set up for what we're going to learn about Luke between 6 and 7. Um, my only complaints about that were his just his face. It didn't look like Luke and his voice didn't sound like Luke. But whatever. I wasn't really focused on that. I was I was really trying to focus on his character. Um, so that's and what he was saying and how he was saying it and why he was saying it, what he got out of it. Um, so I was the the and the action, the the actual mission behind it was terrible. You're you're fighting like flying frogs. For yeah, some, some, that was like it was really weird. Fucking bugs, lightning bugs. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. It was. It, unnecessary like i felt like you could have been doing something else just throw in oh there's natives and they want everybody off whether you're rebellion or and you could have been like defending against them or something but you of course you had to pull out bugs ah man yep i got i got slimed and i'm and i'm luke skywalker (laughs) sneakers say i have to say i'm luke skywalker because my face is so bad that you may not know exactly skywalker exactly Um, sneaker bags is here he says of course i tune in to find you ranting about battlefront Yes, my friend. Yes. Well, we we just got done uh, talking about the good stuff, but uh, we've been ranting and raving about the bad stuff too. And yes, um, Amber, they did have a huge opportunity with Aiden, and they threw it out the window. And it makes me, it just makes me frustrated and sad. Like, yeah, I'm pissed, obviously, about the game, but like beyond that, as a Star Wars fan, and how good Seven was, and how particular and high quality Disney has been taking everything so far, it just made me really frustrated that they had to. It just felt like they cut corners and they just didn't hold true to making a good story in this one. Well, who I'm, I, I, this is how stupid I am. It, it was EA and Dice, right? Uh, and there's a motive in Criterion, and I don't know exactly how that works out. Like what Dice does, what Criterion does. Like, well, and that's I don't what know what I was wondering is who was who was the one to blame? And I feel like yeah. EA ha, EA has to be the one to blame so, because EA is like the publisher. So they like fund the game. They hire Dice to develop the game. They put it out, do the marketing, like, and kind of control how it's going. And uh, they are like exclusively in control of Star Wars games, which I feel like if it was just open and Bethesda could make like a Star Wars game, there'd be some competition. And EA couldn't fuck around like this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I just don't want to get caught up in the negatives. True. Um, but because it is a fun game, and that's kind of the core of what I'm 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 attaching myself to. Because while while it has so many downfalls, and we've just got done crapping on it for about a half hour. <laughs> yep. After this, I might play a couple rounds to see what happens. Um, the other real, and I just want to kind of finish this up uh, with the campaign. Um, to two things so i try not to forget so the campaign itself it finishes up you're back to aiden uh it's the you finish on the battle of jakku which is pretty epic that's pretty fun um, and and they kind of did like a, a, a mass effect one where you're like running up the side yep. of of a, a ship that's like coming down and that was cool it's, yep. it's, it's pretty epic um I, I wouldn't say any of the campaign was particularly difficult I felt like it was spoon fed the entire time. I died a couple times because I was just being an idiot. Oh, I played on the hardest difficulty and I breezed through it. Yeah, it was it was not, not hard, hard at all. I also feel like the campaign suffered from a lot of uh, the issues that we talked about with Galactic Assault, where it's like, we're going to talk about the story in a cutscene. Now go to this blue hovering icon and do this thing and kill people. And then go to the next one and do stuff there and kill people. 
just felt pretty boilerplate as far as that went. So let me let me pull out some uh, some retro knowledge. Commander and I pull it out. Used to play uh, Halo in Halo Two. I yeah. think it was the first first or second one that we would go back and forth on co op or, or on uh, campaign. Um, and there was many times where we would get lost because we weren't like listening to dialogue and stuff. Uh, dialogue conversations. What you're supposed to do. I feel like that is what should happen if you're not listening or paying attention you should get lost and i felt like there was no room for that in this game because i'm just float i'm you got to run towards the, the floating blue thing that's yeah on the map sometimes it's red so no oh, that's a good one <laughs> um but i felt i feel like there, there should be room for error there should be room for messing up and dying and all that and there really isn't yeah. you could be you could be five years old Sorry to all the five-year-olds that are listening to our <laughs> shit. I cussed. I'm sorry. Mad at Tell mad your parents as hell. to be better. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but uh, and the I, Battle I feel of Jakku, like it, it, they had, they, there was just a lack of depth yeah, to the campaign. I agree. Yeah, and Battle of Jakku like, solidified it because it was epic. The scenario was, like, you look around and there's Star Destroyers in the atmosphere. Things are blowing up. Things are crashing. Star Destroyers are breaking in half. It looks fucking sweet. But at the end of the day... Fly your X-Wing over to this blue icon, land, do some things. Fly over to this blue icon, do some things. It just it was just the same thing over and over again. Just wasn't yeah. varied enough, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, the droid was cool, though. The droid was fucking sweet. What droid? Hayden's little droid. Oh, yeah. That was that was probably the coolest aspect of the campaign, yeah. how you could like access him and use him in, in different ways. Yeah, and he could hack um, and shock stuff for you. Yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, I agree. Oh, well, he was a big part of the uh, the book too. Nice. Um, and I it, I actually didn't I didn't know it was like attached to her back, but they used uh, uh, I forget his name, the engineer guy, I, Iden's <laughs> Lars. Well, I don't know what his name was. <laughs> uh, Dell. Dell. Dell was like the engineer guy, scientist in in the book, um, and uh, he created that that droid and it helped him out quite nice, a few times nice. in the book. Yeah. So it was cool to see that like transfer over and him be used like throughout major scenes that if you didn't have them, they probably wouldn't have made it through. Yeah. He was um, sweet. Uh, um, in star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I like it. And it, it, he didn't have to talk at all. He was just a useful droid. Right. That's kind of fun sometimes. Um, Sweeney says they dumbed down the campaign mode for casual gamers or star Wars fans who were buying, a game like this for the first time yes. yeah and it was it was dumbed down too much it's just there was no like we said it was yes. say something you, your mouth's open yes I, I was gonna say like it is better than the 2015 version and i've pe heard people make that argument yes it is but it's obvious that they still dumbed this one down as well so even though they threw a few more things in there and gave us prequels and gave us sequel content they still dumbed the game down like you can't get away from that fact that like it's not a. I don't have any fucking <laughs> words for this anymore, man. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be moving on. Let us know your thoughts. That you're most likely pissed, just like. Do you want to like talk about DLC or like missing Rogue One content or anything, or just skip no, away? I'm done. I don't. I and I I I hate being negative. So I it's. Because I do negative, too, but I'm not we're gonna... negative, we're gonna we're gonna spawn negative thoughts in everybody else. It's the same thing as what we're gonna be getting into with Justice League. All right. That that I I because I I personally feel like you you read negative comments and went in expecting no, to not to no like it. absolutely not absolutely not I swear okay. to God I did not I was really excited okay. for it. Okay. Um. All right. So that's that's it. One one out of three. As they fix bugs and stuff for uh, Battlefront Two, um, I feel like there's a potential to be a solid two. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think it'll ever be a three because there's just too much. Yeah, too much that they they they, they just left out. Um, Agreed. But but with all that said, Star buy it, like, rent it, or or pass on it. I yeah, I think this is where I keep confusing the fuck out of myself and people that are listening to our opinion. Is like if you're a Star Wars fan, we're kind of stuck with it because it's the only game that we have. But it's still fun to be in those scenarios. It's still fun to play on Starkiller Base and to be in Poe's X-Wing and shoot the fuck out of some TIE Fighters. Like, it's still fun to play. If you're a Star Wars fan, you kind of have to get it. It's worth it for that. And 60 bucks is, like, not that much money anymore for a game. So I, I say still get it, but I'm not going to just be complacent about the bad stuff. 
So that's I'm it. definitely going to say buy it. Uh, yeah, I, buy it. Unfortunately, it has its downfalls, but uh, um, or just wait, wait. Like, oh yeah, uh, hand- pre-owned. Wait, what? Yeah, he used to wait, wait for forty, wait for pre-owned, or when they reduce the price or something for Christmas. Yeah, it's something that yeah. I mean, like like you said, we're stuck with it, but. <laughs> The scenarios are cool. You get to play as Kylo finally. You get to play as Ray finally. There's aspects to the game that you're not going to get anywhere else. So it's oh, definitely a it's a buy it for me. We didn't talk about the uh, the Kylo mission or the ending possible spoiler for seven. Okay, Kylo mission was weird. Yeah, so they threw this Kylo mission at the end. So basically, it just you finish the campaign at the Battle of Jakku, Aiden and Del start making out, and then it jumps to maybe a few what? months or something before uh, I thought Force it Awakens. even said like a couple said years decades. or something. Well, it said huh? decades later. Did it say decades? Yes. Well, it's obviously like from a few years after six to Force Awakens is decades, but it decades. jumped to Kylo Ren is hunting down the map for to Skywalker and he comes across Dell and he's in the old Corvus, which has been retrofitted. And you hear that now he has a daughter and he's a smuggler and he gave up fighting for the resistance to like take care of his daughter and then Kylo Ren tries to break into his mind. And I thought this was dumb. Like, it was cool to play as Kylo, but when you're fighting through his memories and just killing troopers, I thought that was stupid. Um, I agree. I brain farted for a second. Sorry. No, I agree. Because that it was like every every other mission in the campaign was very straightforward. And this one was just like at right at the end of the game, you went really weird, dreamy, spacey with it. And it just, first of all, it didn't fit. Mm-hmm. Second of all, you were, f- like, even in the dream sequences, you were fighting all enemies. Like, you started fighting First Order people, and then you were fighting, like, natives, and then you were fighting the Resistance, and it was just, like... And those fucking I, bugs I, so came is back. So this, is, this is this supposed to, like, represent you fighting through his memories? Yeah. Like, this, and it, everything was, like, smoky, and I right. got lost once, Warbly. and I was just, like, over in a corner just somewhere. A fucking Caesar. Yeah, it was just a very, very awkward, weird way to end a campaign. Yeah, it was. And I think what they were trying to do was set it up for DLC, which I get, but it wasn't done very well. Um, and basically what happens is you get to the memory. He learns that Laura Santeca has the map, which kind of sets us up for where why he's going to Jakku in the first place. So now there's all these ties between Aiden and Dell ending the campaign at Jakku. Kylo's tracking he- down Dell. He finds out that Laura Santeca has Skywalker's map, and now he's back at Jakku. So all these, like, invisible, not invisible, fuck, all these uh, dots are, like, being connected between how the campaign ended and Episode 7. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it It sets up a perfect, and I, I feel like Disney's playing with our minds because everything's so obvious that stuff connects. At I this doubt, point, yeah, I, with and it, I doubt with, this is real, but go with it ending on Jakku. They blaringly say Kylo says to Dell, "Your daughter has messed with your devotion, your mind, or whatever. You're no longer able to do whatever the hell." It's just like, all right, let's add this up. You were on Jakku 20 years ago. You now have a daughter that could be 19, 20 years old. Oh, look what we have in Episode Seven. Daughter from a Jakku daughter is 19, 20 from years old. Someone that's 19, 20 years old on Jakku. So it's like they lined up the, like you said, they connected dots or they put the dots on the map. Right. That right next to each other that, you know, it, it's an easy connection. Um, I really, and it's like, it almost doesn't make sense. The other thing was the fact that Luke ran into Dell. So this is the oh, this is the the dots that aren't connected directly. Luke actually was a part of turning Dell over yeah. and changed him into a good guy. Yeah. So the fact that we in episode eight when Ray actually meets up with Luke, I feel like there's that face where he's like, "I know you." Yeah, if it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's walk down that path. Like. Some there's a connection between us, and I'm not sure what it is, but it could potentially be you're here because I was forgive I, I forgave your father for being in the situation that he was put in mm-hmm. and helped him out and changed his mind. Right. And all the way down the line, 30 years later, 20 years later, here you are knocking on my hobbit hole. Knocking on heaven's door. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's so the the whole aspect that, and it doesn't even have to directly be Aiden, Aiden's daughter. It could be. I mean, True. you don't know. Dell yeah. Dell could be banging around. Um, yeah, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world, but I just don't think it's likely. Yeah, I think it's just too obvious, honestly. Um, so there, there's a potential large spoiler, but we just talked about it. I, uh, I, I'm scared to say that it could be true. I did also see on Twitter from a, one of the developers that said, whatever the next DLC that's coming out, or first, I should say, he, he said he recommends not playing the Resurrection DLC until after you see Last Jedi. Then why would they release it before? Just throwing that out there. I don't know if it's coming out before. I'm just saying that he said, don't see, don't play it until you see the movie. Well, they better not release it until. After I don't the movie. know what the fuck's happening. I gave up. I'm, I'm mad as heck. Um, all right. That's our final thoughts on, uh, on that justice. Yep. Oh, wait. All right. Moving right along. This is the longest episode it's ever been. All I right. love it. I feel, right. like, I feel like real, real host now. It's like we're doing something. Well, it's been All like right. it felt like uh, somewhat of a dry spell of like content, like at the end of summer and fall. And now all of a sudden we got Thor. We got Justice League. We saw I saw a bunch of different movies. We got Battlefront. We got Last Jedi coming out. A lot of stuff's popping up. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> all right. 